What's been really the exploration for me is that, especially within the art, I've gotten back to my first love and interest, which is science and nature and the environment. So I'm always trying to reveal in my art a little bit about nature that literally is invisible to us. For over 25 years, Maya Lin has been blurring the line between art and architecture, creating subtly minimalist works that suggest the natural world. Ms. Lin first came to public notice in 1981 as a 21-year-old senior at Yale, when, in a blind competition, her design was selected from more than 1,400 others for the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. Since then, she has gone on to produce well-received works in three different forms, architecture, art, and memorials. What I've been doing for the last 20 years has been all about my interest in perceptions and possibly an ordering of the landscape. Wayfield, her new earthwork project at the Storm King Art Center, is an 11-acre installation that will open to the public next spring. It consists of seven rows of undulating hills which are shaped like ocean waves cradled in a gently sloping valley. I often work in series in my works and this will be the third and last of works called the Wayfields that basically take what you think of as an identifiable imagery. We all know what a water wave looks like, but I'm always trying to get you to take a different look at it. The first wave field is in Michigan. The waves are three to five feet high. You deliberately can sit in almost a cupped wave, read a book. It's very intimate in scale. The second in the series tripled the scale of the site. So from 10,000, it went to 30,000. And the waves were much more reminiscent of how water travels over sand. So these waves were only about a foot high, so it became a very different relationship how you walk through it. And I always knew that I wanted to culminate the series with a field that literally when you were in it, you became lost inside it. So the waves had to become much larger than you. These waves range from 12 to 18 feet above your head. And whether you walk through a row of waves or whether you're walking wave to wave from the high to the low to the high to the low. Very interested in how it changes. About a year ago I started using my garbage to make artworks and so this is one of the first ones I did. It's actually mostly FedEx boxes and it's just a little recycled landscape and then I started just working with my kids toys because it's almost embarrassing how much junk we amass. So these are all part of a series of toy asteroids. That one's actually bottle caps that'll grow to be about this big. And then this is something I did called 10 Degrees North, and it's a puzzle. It's a map of the world. This is Tibet, and this is North America, and it's a sectional relief of the world. But all maps, like if you buy a map in China, the Pacific Ocean is whole and the Atlantic is cut. So maps are inherently political and in how we view the world. So this is cut into 52 segments and you can shift it. And you can literally shift the pieces and shift your perspective on how you want to see the world. And so this is just a little study I did. And then this is a smaller version of what's in the Systematic Landscape Show. And this is, if you look at it from up above, it's the Caspian Sea. And then we ended up doing data stats. So I just pulled it, just trying to get you to think about what's below the surface. I think my work has slowly um, coalesced. You know, I, I got out of graduate school being labeled as an architect. I never was able to choose between the architecture and the art. So one of my concerns was always, how can I do both? And it is hard because I think they're tapping into very different aesthetics. And I would say that making architecture is like writing a novel. Making a work of art is like writing a poem. <laughs>